There are often homeless people asking for change and freeway exit ramps, but recently there's been this guy with an interesting sign at I-71 and Hudson Street. His handwritten sign says he has the God-given gift of a great voice. Hey, I'm going to make you work for your dollar. Say something with that great radio voice. When you're listening to nothing but the best of oldies, you're listening to Magic 98.9. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. And we'll be back with more right after these words. <laughs> and don't forget, tomorrow morning is your chance to win a pair of tickets to see this man live in concert. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, when I was 14 years old, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. When I was 14, I kind of listened to one of our area radio announcers. And uh, I went as a field trip to go meet the guy, and he looked nothing like what he sounded like. So I asked him about that, and he said to me, listen, radio is defined theater of mind. And so when he said theater of mind, I just said, well, hey, I can't be an actor. I can't be an on-air personality, but... The voice just became something of a, of a development over years, and I went to school for it. And then alcohol and drugs and a few other things became a part of my life. And I got two years clean, and I'm trying hard to get it back. And hopefully somebody from one of these television or radio says, Hey, I need a voiceover, or I, I need something. So, you know, I'm hoping one day... Watch Family Guy, weeknights at 7.30 on Fox 28. For a brief moment in 2011, Ted Williams captivated America as the man with the golden voice. After a video featuring the once homeless man's smooth, radio-friendly voice quickly went viral online, people just couldn't get enough of him. Williams soon gained fame as more and more reports popped up about him, forming a real-life rags-to-riches story as Williams went on to say goodbye to the streets and hello to some seriously profitable gigs. Unfortunately, however, his rise to the top wasn't without some major steps backwards, as the former drug-addicted Ohio resident had some trouble managing his newfound celebrity status. So, just what happened to Williams after his life story went viral? Things have changed for Williams since he gained nationwide recognition. At the time, Williams was homeless and asking for help on the streets of Ohio, aided by a sign that read, I have a God-given gift of voice. His remarkable sound went viral. A $375,000 book deal and offers from Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, MSNBC, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and many other opportunities soon followed. Williams, whose former radio career was sidelined by years of addiction to drugs and alcohol, had suddenly been given a second chance at life. And yet, that renewed success proved fragile. About a week after he became famous, Williams admitting to talk show host Dr. Phil McGraw that he was still drinking and agreed to enter a treatment facility. A spokesperson for the Dr. Phil show claimed Williams' decision was fueled in part by a physical altercation with one of his daughters, reported CNN. Williams lasted just 12 days in the facility before leaving voluntarily. About four months later, Williams returned to rehab, committing to a 90-day program. After entering treatment, the Cleveland Cavaliers opted not to pursue a working relationship with him, and the book deal and other gigs were also put on hold. After completing the treatment program, Williams apologized to Dr. Phil for lying about numerous things, including his sobriety. Williams appeared on the Today Show in May 2012 to discuss the release of his book, A Golden Voice, How Faith, Hard Work, and Humility Brought Me From the Streets to Salvation. The memoir revealed some startling information, including that Williams was a delinquent parent and had even played a role in prostituting his girlfriend so he could get money for drugs. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. We ran into each other on the street, not far from here, a couple of weeks ago. And my first reaction was, he looks good. He yes, looks sir. really good. Is, is, is the exterior showing me what's going on inside? Yes, it is. So inside and outside. What's going on with you? Well, right now, Matt, I have a book, as you yeah. mentioned. And uh, I'm... Um, um, Excuse me, I'm so nervous again. Here we go. Uh, I have a new, first of all, I have a new uh, uh, rooted background. You know, I have a new attorney who's representing me very Good well. Good people around Good people you around now. me. Great people around me. You've been uh, clean and sober one for... One year. Uh, actually, May 4th celebrated the, the day that my daughter, and I also had a, a daughter who got married on right. May 4th, but um, it's been one year. After we met you and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff happened to you, the appearances on shows like this and all the interviews, it was not a, a simple 
process going forward. You had steps forward and steps, steps back. back. You yes, had sir. relapses. Yes, sir. And many so, of them. how many times have you been in rehab since we first met you? Well, the last time, May uh, May fourth, one year uh, last year, I went in for the second time. Right. That was the second time. The first time I left uh, after eight days or nine days. Was the attention and the fact that you started to make a little money mm -hmm. was that a problem? I mean, you know, we worried here. I'll be very honest with you. We yeah. worried that once you got some cash in your pocket, you were going to go out and spend that cash on drugs. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah, I went to California, and uh, alcohol became the first. Uh, uh, I figured since it wasn't my drug of choice, so to speak, alcohol could be my new drug. You know, I could go and start drinking, and this nobody would know. You know, everybody would know Ted was on crack, but they wouldn't know that Ted was drinking. So, yeah. Is it a struggle every day for you still? Yes, it is. One day at a time, Matt, I must tell you. This book is not an easy read. Uh, I mean, there, <laughs> there are things in this book you're pretty honest about, delinquent parenting, dishonesty with your mother, even your role in prostituting your girlfriend so that you could get money for drugs. Why did you decide to write this? Well, you know, uh, uh, all through that journey, uh, I never stopped praying. I never lost hope, Matt. I never did. I, stop I, I would ask God, please, let my mother and myself stay alive one more year, Lord, please. Let, let a, a life-changing turnaround happen in my life so that my mother would not close her eyes saying I, I did a bad job raising this child you know and, and every year it would get more and more difficult to accept as, a, as I mentioned to you a year ago that I was going to mark 2010 as another year wasted but it actually was the year that I found Christ in my life. In October 2014, nearly four years after his life-changing video, the Columbus Dispatch sat a day down with Williams for a lengthy interview, during which Williams revealed that he had been struggling to make ends meet, despite maintaining his deal with Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, landing a six-figure book deal, and securing other radio and voiceover gigs. Financially, I'm a little under the weather, he said. A lot of things that I signed early on, in 2011, I probably shouldn't have signed. A lot of people that were involved in my life then shouldn't have been. Williams, who in 2013 narrated the documentary Houseless, went on to admit he didn't even own a single piece of furniture. I own nothing. I don't even have a car right now. His dreams for the future included buying an automobile, obtaining a driver's license, and getting a place of his own. On the bright side, Williams confirmed he was still sober. In what could have been the destruction of his comeback, Williams alleged that his ex-manager, Alfred Battle, tried to lure him into participating in a heroin smuggling scheme. According to the Daily Mail, Battle was arrested on July 21, 2016 at Newark Airport, carrying 18 pounds of heroin, with an estimated value of $512,000, after arriving on a flight from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. He could have planted some drugs on me, or maybe he would have used me as the fall guy or something, Williams guessed of Battle's motivations. According to the Columbus Dispatch, Battle pleaded guilty as part of a plea agreement to a felony charge of possession with intent to distribute a controlled dangerous substance. He is expected to serve eight years in prison. In 2016, Williams appeared on Oprah's Where Are They Now? While recapping the story of his rise, fall, and rise again, Williams became emotional about his desire to leave a legacy of which both his fans and family could be proud. You know, on January 4th, 2011, I was, again, homeless and penniless and hopeless in some people's eyes. And when I got the call that they were looking for a homeless guy with a, a golden voice, I had no idea really who they were talking about until someone called me and told me, it's you that they're looking for. Your video went viral. Again, I don't know uh, what to make of that because I wasn't familiar with viral videos and I didn't post that video and I knew nothing, very little, should I say, of the internet and all. And next thing you know, I'm on the Today Show with Matt Lauer and Meredith and all of those great people. And all of a sudden thereafter, I'm on one of the leading doctor shows on television. I mean, the cameras, the lights, I've had all of the networks around the world. I went from homeless to Hollywood. <laughs> I went from drinking rot gut to gray goose in a matter of minutes. Overwhelming would be an understatement.
let's just say I was paralyzed with fear. I was paralyzed with with uh, success. I just didn't know what to feel at any given time. My emotions surfaced out of nowhere. All through my homeless days, I never cried. My father died, I never cried. Here, I get to this point, and it seemed like everything that I should have and would have cried for surfaced, and I just became an emotional wreck. I, I feel like it was really too much too fast. I mean, hey, giving me a job would have been one thing. Ted, you know, you've won this, you've, you've got that, and thank you so much. I would have, I'd have been satisfied right then and there. When people see me, they see an act of God. Yeah. They also see that God is still alive and he's still working modern day miracles. So that's I really do feel that he who was homeless will lead the homeless home. I don't want people to think of me as I left this earth that I was a crackhead. I want them to, to see the impact. And I want my grandkids to look on YouTube and see some of the things that they and Papa was proud of that did. And, and I, I'm not going to sell myself short for anything because God gave me this for a reason. And that reason is to be here to talk to you, to tell you, to keep me in your prayers. And to that end, he now works with homeless charities, like Friends of the Homeless, the shelter he once relied on when he was down and out. I was right there at the head of the line, waiting for my handout, Williams recalled. So this is where I have a lot of loyalties now. Because they know that I was just five years ago in the same situation that they were. According to Good News Center, Williams has even larger charitable aspirations. I want to open up a homeless laundromat, he said, describing a laundromat where volunteer attendants wash and dry homeless people's clothes so they have a shot at getting back to work, like he did. And there you have it, my name is Harry, and thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our new channel.